Thank you all for watching Dr. Drew After Dark. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors today. That is Upstart, and I'll tell you a little more about that later. But first, on with the show. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. And welcome to another Dr. Drew After Dark. Of course, you can send us those emails at Dr. Drew After Dark, drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. And also the voice messages, which have been spot on lately, 818-253-1693. Again, 818-253-1693. And now I'd like to welcome my friend, Jamie Kennedy. Buddy. How are you, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Do people know our history? Go ahead. We have a long history. We have a long history together. We do. We have a long history. Uh, mostly, I think it's centered around you coming on Love Line trying to prove that trauma had nothing to do with sexual promiscuity. That's you. That was your, that was your, you were like man of La Mancha when it came to that. You were, you were like, this was your quest, but you were actually tilting Hold at, at windmills. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I would go down the rabbit hole. But as I've gotten older. You have found? There's a, a lot of truth. I don't know. There's a high percentage of truth to what you're saying. Yes, yes. But to act like. I guess where there was something in this a four hour podcast, which we can't even get into it, the fact that like, sometimes I felt like you made like sexual fun, like damage, you know, like, no, no, no I like, you know, extra, no, no, someone who likes to give blowjobs. They were touched at Trader no, Joe's. No judgment. No judgment. Jamie. Damage. No judgment. It's just, we were just making sense. Of things. Like I was, I agree. Not every girl wakes up and goes stripping. Yeah, and, ja and Jamie's goal was to find. No, I was like, there was one, there was one that had like a, a like took that elective in Tampa in high school. I mean, it is a degree down there. Uh, I understand, but but you were your quest as man of La Mancha was to find the women that were not traumatized and yet were hypersexual. And you educated me. And I told me, you that's going to be a hard putt, but you'll find somebody. No, you educated me seriously, and I'm going to give you ninety eight point eight. Okay, but Thank can you. I get one percent? Yes, there's actually healthy sex out yes, there. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Right. But but it it got us into the fat fanny stuff discussion oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so so you don't want to bring that up <laughs> oh, yes, well I do. as it's getting more and more and people are getting woke i do feel like there is a huge awakening do you agree with that of sorts yeah it's, because, it's kind of like it's so we're so woke we're asleep though at some time so yes yeah. but, but by being all connected i i call it the uh world check-in <clears throat> yeah people yeah. can go hey well i didn't know that was happening here and they go well it happens like this over here do you agree with that yep i agree and that the well, it's we were talking about Fat Fanny, whereas I was a uh, a little league, a little league. Little league. You're probably I, eight. I was eight or nine, not double digits mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a catcher. My boy was the pitcher. Mm -hmm. You were in Philly. I was in Philly, yeah. and uh, we had a guy who, and I'm trying to write a joke about it, who was a 61 year old volunteer. <laughs> so right away it might be a red flag he's a yeah volunteer. except except when i brought that up to you you're like oh no he was just the guy that liked hanging out with us well, dude, just, and then dude, i didn't know like i was I, eight and i was I'm an just altar saying boy. you were defending I was in, the guy i was indoctrinated into the system yes you were so then uh so then jamie went oh i do remember something well he I used to, I don't know if you guys ever did this out there, but as a Catholic schoolboy, I was weird, but I would pee sometimes when my pants would be down through my butt. Is that no, the you, boy, little boys do that. They drop their trowel. Drop and trowel. And you literally pee. drop trowel. Yeah. You're peeing, but you're nine. Yeah, little boys do that. Not, maybe not nine-year-olds, but anyway, boys do that. And the game was a double header. Okay, this is already getting weird, but it was. <laughs> and we were in the middle of a, a middle league, a little league game, and he would come in the toilet and he goes, Hey, boys, we're going to get this one. We're going to win, right? And he walked by and he goes, Smack, smack. And he goes, You got a fat fanny. <laughs> He just repeat it. Fat yes. Fanny. You got a fat fanny. And I was like, mm, 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 like pissed on my hand. I was like, fat fanny. What? And my friend's like, you got, you, now you're working out. You look good. Fat fanny. He's like, fat fanny. Let's go, boys. <laughs> you got a fat fanny. And like, I'm like, do I have a fat ass? Like, do I, is in the no, early fat fanny. Age? Fat fanny. Fat fanny. And then like my friend was like, no, it looks good. <laughs> And then I just realized it took me until I was like 43 and when I was on I, when I, when I Yeah, I pointed it out to you. She was like, uh, you, were, you were almost diddled. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's like a hello. And he's like, no. And then it went down the rabbit hole. Now I, I've examined a lot of behavior. Yes. Which people do. Yes. And I was like, ooh. Yeah, ooh. so there we go. The fat fanny guy bonded us. You're going to fat fanny. <laughs> and he, 
He, he got, I mean, he didn't get in, but he was. I understand he didn't put his digits finger up were, here. Digits were around. Nearby. Were around nearby. the. That it, was, it was a sexual planet. slap of sorts. I don't know. I mean, the guy was pissing. He's like, come on, boys, we got to win. So I was thinking baseball. He's like, you're going to get your game, man. And I'm uh -oh. Fanny. He what? What's, what's with the hands? He would, though, because I, I was the catcher. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought he was doing that with your ass. No, I wasn't. Jesus Christ. I'm just saying, dude. All right, so <laughs> you grew up in Philadelphia. Do not get me killed. Let's talk about Philadelphia. What was it like growing up? Um, Philly. Uh, okay, I'm gonna talk about it, but you gotta report how it is now. Uh, it Philly was a very. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what it is right now. It was a no. It was not good. N no, I want. I'm gonna talk in simple terms so we can like get to the root of shit. <laughs> so it's that's a, not a problem. It's a no. It's a non-problem. No, Philly was a no, meaning like you could never. It was never like, hey, I wanna have a pretzel. No. You know, okay, I see. I That's wanna, all you heard. I want to be an actor. No! So, I is that your no dad? Uh, no, not my dad. My who, dad. Was, who was saying no? Uh, the city of Philadelphia. And, and newscasters, so, our sports teams, our teachers, priests, my mother, my mother's friends, other students. Right. No, 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 no. So it was negative, cold. negative, negative. Negative Nellies. And, and your dad, what did he do? My dad was a quick story, grew up a very wealthy child, mm. lost all their money. Um, then my father was the salt of the earth. It, it's really interesting how much, I was listening to a podcast today, an economic, economics podcast, and it, the people moving through different classes is much more common than I, than I understood. Mm. So, and so, and I've been talking to lots of people doing these interviews, and most people have some sort of story about at least one of their grandparents having had a lot or having made a lot or being po impoverished and then not. And oh. That's much more common than we realize. Well, I didn't, so, I didn't realize that. So my dad was kind of like an aristocratic guy. What, in, in Philadelphia? No, in Tennessee. Mm. And his family owned a piece, excuse me, of a germ, of a brewery that you can look up in Cincinnati that eventually Anheuser-Busch mm. bought. Wow. So we would have had a piece of that money. Nice. And then there was a crazy thing that happened and they lost all the money. What happened? There was a fire. Mm. Hashtag early well, 20s. Well, my, my wife's grandfather. Hashtag. Yeah, my wife's grandfather was in the beer business for five minutes. Okay. And, and they were having fires and things too. Oh, yeah. Set by the, oh. the folks out of Chicago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chicago Fire Group. The, uh, yeah, they're, what's they're his handy. Name? They're handy with the with, with the, the vault. Bench. What's his name? I, uh, uh, Sam, Al Capone. I don't want to say Al, this. Al Capone was the one that Sam uh, Giacana. Oh, yeah. They were nice people. So, okay, there was a fire. So there was a fire. This is all before my time. Mm -hmm. And I'm the youngest of six. So, and then my dad ended up becoming the main breadwinner. He ended up uh, meeting my mother who... What was he doing as the, as the breadwinner? Uh, he went into the Navy. Uh. And he didn't like school. He quit school when he was in ninth grade. Wish he quit sooner. I tried to quit. My mom wouldn't let me. And my mom was, you're going to love all this classic setup, immigrant depression parents. And her brother died in front of her, which was very common from like, not even polio. It was uh, a, 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 a like, pneumonia, pneumonia, yeah, pneumonia yeah. which was like huge back then. Yeah. And two of her sisters and her lived in a closet, broke. My grandmother was like, oh Christ, you know, like right off the boat. Oh boy. And my grandfather was like, right off the boat. Oh. And like he worked in the railroad. So well, you had country club oh Bobby. And then you what was had his ethnicity? Depression. They were Irish. Uh, your dad too? No, my dad was um, from Germany. Germany is that Cincinnati? The yes. Midwest thing is Germany. And yeah. the beer people yeah. and and English. Yeah. And my mom was Irish, and all Irish, I think. How and did you avoid getting an al alcoholism? Dude, you know what? I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. I'm gonna. I haven't drank in nine months. Good for you. And I and it's not that I'm trying to be sober. It's I was trying to lose weight mm -hmm. for when I was taping. And after about two months. I have zero craving yeah. and I feel so much better yeah. and more productive. I'm a little crazier, but I have to channel it. Cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I've seen you channel crazy. <laughs> yes. But, but, but I'm not, listen, I, beer is a whole, uh, I think booze is really poisonous more than people realize. Oh yeah. That's my opinion. Oh, it's absolutely true. But, um, so I don't know how I avoided it. I was never a huge, huge drinker. Did they pound on you about the depression? Did they? My mother big time. Yeah. Big time. It was never, it was all like, it was, yes. Burying was, coins in the backyard. My and, dad was not. You have to say, my dad is a complete dreamer. Oh. My dad believed in aliens. My Whoa. dad, my dad is very, 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 
a wild thinker, and I, which I think believe is an open mind. He questioned everything, and my mother conspiracy a, therapist. Mm, there, there is. That's disrespectful, and I'll tell you why. Because you're basically discrediting everything they say when they say that. That's a whole other podcast. I mean, it's not just conspiracies. There are certain things. The government does lie. Do you agree with that? Sure. Okay. So my opinion, just my opinion. He, I just know that if you and I went and tried to just keep any secret, it would last about a week. <laughs> so that's just two people. Well, okay. Well, that's all. Here's my dad had an open mind. My mom was a student of the system. Put those together, and that's why I think we are. My whole family's the way we are. So it was beautiful. We had literally polar opposites. What's everybody else doing? Uh, my one sister is. It's all girls, wasn't it? A bunch of girls. A lot of girls, and my brother and me. Uh, my one sister is an artist, and you know she's you know in her life, but she's a creative person who kind of went in the straight and the narrow, and has her own issues but she's you know works with older people like she was taking care of my mm. mother before she died and which just happened right yeah which just happened a couple of weeks ago wow um, sorry mm, she was, but she lived a good life and she was very my mother old was and, 89 years old yeah uh, she had a beautiful life uh i mean not hard life but i she got to see me do multiple things i mean she got to see my name on man's chinese theater three times that's cool i can't you know i mean yeah. the only thing is she never got to see me is like get married but again, like I'll probably win an Oscar before that happens. I, or, so, or pff, I may I die. No I may die before that happens. <laughs> but I mean, I I really do. I, I I tell people to use their parents in their life mm. because they don't, and there's a lot of regrets. I have a couple tiny regrets with my mother, but not horrible. Because, but I also find out that, that my dad was storybook. My dad he died with all of us holding hands, mm. playing Frank Sinatra, looking into his eyes. It was- Wow, what did, what did he die of? He was in hospice. He had lung cancer and mm. did not want to operate. Well, sure. And he was 87. Oof, good for him. He had a great life and he smoked way too much. Mm. Do you smoke? No. Good. Don't smoke, don't really, I haven't drank in nine months. CBD sometimes, is that bad? Mm -mm. Is that illegal? No. Okay. It's good for you, they, so they say. And so- And a lot of normal sex. Mm -hmm. When did comedy get into the, the deal with for you? Was it acting first? Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. So I started as a comic. I started as an extra. So I'll go back to, I try to give it quick because- You don't have we to. We can go now. We got time. Um, I was, I came out to California when I was nine years old with my parents. They had friends out here. Why'd they move out here? Oh, you're just visiting? Visiting in oh. 1979. I have the pictures and I knew that I was supposed to be here. Hmm. I know that sounds weird. And did you have that thought? Like I'm going to come back here and feeling. Yeah. Feeling. I Isn't it interesting how a nine year old can have that? Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was on the universal tour and I was picked out of all the people in the tram to be Frankenstein's assistant. And at that time they were promoting some kind of Frankenstein and I was the whole tour. Then we went to Sam Simeon and I was also the tour guide's little helper. I don't know why. Maybe I was annoying, but whatever. That would be shocking if you were annoying. <laughs> yeah, so, that would be a so, I was, I was like, I'm meant to be. I'm meant to be. And my mom's like, shut oh, you're, up. You're start nine. Shut up. Oh my God. And we went to Huntington Beach and I was like, like boogie boarding before boogie boards were there. And I'm like, we got to live here. And my mom's like, shut up. Go back to school. Repress, 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 repress. Depression, depression, depression. See the priest. Catastrophe, catastrophe. See the priest. Yeah. And so I'm like, no, like I was like so drawn to California. I was like eating tacos. So anyway, I begged my mom to fucking say i said i want to be in california he's like what do you want to do i'm like i don't know i want to be on tv i used to watch three's company and i was in love with three's company i was in love with chrissy i thought janet was annoying but i loved her and jack tripper was my dad and i would watch them every week and then i would watch too close for comfort with ted knight and he would be, <laughs> i was just <laughs> i just i just die you I'm, love tv loved raised so, but this is like late 1970s oh, tv there's... though <laughs> And um, just beautiful. Wait, so, so what, what were some of your other favorite TV shows? Uh, Too Close for Comfort, Three's Company, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, Charlie had the best setup. Um, Trapper John was good. Uh, I mean, anything of that era. Did you watch comedies? Yeah, I mean, Three's Company, dude, was the oh, best. Oh, yeah, I guess that was Happy <laughs> Days was amazing. Laverne and Charlie was good. Like, anything, you know, I watched. It was a lot of ABC. I loved ABC. And so, so this is post I Dream of Jeannie and Gilligan's Island. That was it's before the, my time. Yeah, it's the next next phase of television. So I was raised by this, and obviously Brady S Bunch. Yeah, because it was all the reruns. Yeah, 
SNL, and for me at that time, SNL was Eddie Murphy, and that's who raised me. Like, uh, that is my number one comedy idol. Okay, so, so that's when comedy hooked, is SNL. Yeah, well, this, uh, Ted Knight, Caddyshack, yeah. Jack Tripp. Jack Tripp is a huge part. Eddie, huge. I mean, I can name like five or six of them. Joan yeah. Rivers. Oh. I mean, you know. Do uh, so you watch Lam Tonight Show? To uh, Tonight Show all the time. Remember Lamb Chop? Uh, Sherry, Sherry, yeah. Sherry Lewis. Uh, she was hilarious. Uh, Fantasy Island, yeah. Vegas. These are all the shows. So, dude, you guys, you guys, questions on questions. You gotta let me. I don't even know which one we're answering. That's right. So, Meta. Um. I anyway, I wanted to come out there, and I didn't. So know you anything. probably, you probably loved it because of all the TV. You saw it all happening on television. You were in love with TV. You wanted to go be a part of it. Well, I saw what adulthood was impending dooming to me, and I thought in Philadelphia. Yes. Yeah. And my mom's like, she would always say stuff like this, and you're going to love it. I'm giving him such an easy thing to break down for me. Enjoy it. That's what my mom used to say. I'm sorry. I wasn't doing Brody either. God rest your soul. I love you, Brody. But my mom used to say this all the time. She would be like, you're on the couch. Enjoy it. Because soon you're going to have to get a job, and you're going to have to go into the workforce. She would tell me this at nine. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I had my I'm dad telling me, he -Man. I had my dad telling me I was going to send him to the poor house. Oh, that was a big one. At two. <laughs> because I needed some shoes. Hey, you're using too many diapers. Yeah. Go to the, it's all right. He, he, he'd, do the, he'd do the full guilt. He'd go, hey, it, you know, you need to buy those shoes? Get them. Uh, but tomorrow you have to come visit me in the poor house. Get the shoes. Get the shoes. But tomorrow you'll wave to me through the window at the poor house. It's all right. You can wave. You can't talk, but we can wave through the window. Wait, you're two. Yeah. How would you buy a shoe? That it went on. It went on for in a years. Shoe. It went on for years. This the poor house. Anyway, poor, my mom used to say this. It doesn't grow on trees. Yep. Did money grow on trees? It's not on a tree. Yes. So, so you escaped. You came out here. Yeah, so like when I was like 15, it was just impending more and more and more. I'll give you another life moment. Because I know how your brain, I think, works. My sisters all came out of college and did that and were very much, you know, feminism, the OG feminism of, like, they went to, like, only female school. Where'd they go? Mount Holyoke, which is one oh. of the last bastions. You know, so, do you know, it's right next to where I went to college in Amherst. There you go. And do you know that? No. but I you, went, I, right, I did, I did, I was John Proctor in the Crucible at Mount Holyoke College <laughs> in 19, find that picture, 1970. Seven. He might have banged my sister. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? <laughs> He's so, looking for pictures. Wow. So long short of it is, dude, one of my first. Hey, where the other ones go? Two of them went to Mount Holyoke. One went to Penn and oh. one went to Penn State. When so, were the Holyoke girls there? Dude, early 80s. No, I was out by 80. Oh, okay. Yeah. But let's check. So, so when people talk about all this stuff, I have done a lot of time in Mount Holyoke. So when you talk about feminism, like people think, you know, whatever. You went to visit? All the time. In fact, one of my first performing things was I was a magician, a kid magician. So that was like my mom's like, you want to be an actor? I don't understand what that is, but we're going to start you magic. Oh, and so she did put, she, she said I had nice hands. She's like, you have nice hands. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, well, people like to look at nice fingers when you're doing magic. Oh my God. So you should do magic. <laughs> So I did sleight of hand. I saw this old dude every once a week, and he's like, take the ball, hide the ball here, put the ball there. Here, the ball's behind your fucking ball bag. You got a fat fanny. Next thing. The, Another fat fanny. So, and I could ride the unicycle. I could juggle. And so my mom she didn't know about acting. I'm like, I'm like, no, I want a SAG card. And she's like, no, you're a juggler. And I'm like, a SAG card, old bag. So she did try to help me with my dreams, but it was a Philly dream. Does that make sense? Yes. And so like placating you. No, but she did. I too I took magic. All right, all right. And so I would go and visit every these these different spring breaks or whatever with my sisters and my mom like, now do your magic show. So I would do that for all these like women that were out there, like, down with dick. And I'm like, watch the ball. <laughs> oh God. So any hoosers, around fifteen, my sister started traveling with Trailblazer and another sister followed her. I'm talking worldwide. I'm talking Bangladesh, like the whole hostile thing. Mm. And so they would put pictures on their wall, almost like a vision board without doing it. And I would say, why do you guys going to do this like this when you can just do it as an entertainer? Like, what do you mean? I'm like, if you're a rock star or you're a movie star. You have star, a reason to go around. Then you can live in Bangladesh and like be chilling in the four seasons. They're like, who does that? And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. And they're like, you're going to be a star. And I'm like, yeah. 
I'm going to figure it the fuck out. And they're like, you're a magician. And so. These are your sisters. <laughs> yes. <saying. laughs> And they're like take they would like take pictures and show us pictures of like themselves like in latrines and like amazing they're trailblazers yeah. but I'm like you gotta live in a hotel so anyway it's for some reason I don't know I didn't know about acting or anything but I was drawn to it I tried to be an extra a couple times I heard what that is and then one time I strike of lightning I got to be an extra in a movie called Dead Poet Society wow and that was the beginning of my life how did that start it. So I was taking a local acting class. I just I was like, I got to figure out. Like, I was two things I was interested in. It was cooking, and I liked entertaining. I didn't even. How did, how did you support yourself when you were? No, I was in. I was in high school at this point. I was the, in Philly. The Dead Poets Society thing. Yeah, that was in high school. Was it in, film? In the high school. Oh wow! And so I was working at Domino's as a day job. Got it. And then I had some money, and I was like, like to cook. And then I like to take, I like to figure out if I liked acting. So I took a local class and the lady in the local class said, there's a movie coming and blah, blah, blah. And my friend has one line. I can submit you for extra work. I went down, it was like hitting gold. And the next thing you know, they're like, will you cut your hair? Boom. It's $50 a day. Boom. Can you work these days? And boom. Do you have a vest that looks like 1950s? Yep. Boom. Boom. They sign. Boom. Right there. It's $50 a day eating like all the fruit and craft service I wanted. And Robin Williams is right there. And I was like. <laughs> how did this happen yeah and i was in philly and i was like and then like that was this isn't great and it was the first time i was ever in a group of people from but, but that could have been you could have been after the end of that dropped and boom it then plummeted and not not found anything after that what would you do next well i did i just was dropped and plummeted multiple times but i you kept going well i just i literally stepped on the set and i just there was an older gay, like Broadway guy. There was a, a middle-aged Asian woman. There was an older black woman. There was another kid like me. There was a Chinese kid. I mean, like every ethnicity, sexuality was all on the set. And we were all like, we all want to be on set and be actors. And I was like, well, how do you do it? And they were like, tell me. And then they would say this. And they would go, oh my God, I did a commercial last week with Carol Channing. I'm like, Carol Ch And so we would share all these stories. And I was in a part of a conscious collective. Did you keep in touch with these people? No. So, so what was your next crazy. step? This is what but my next step was I said, I'm going to do this. And so I worked at Domino's. I took every job I could, delivered pizzas, made a lot of money as a delivery guy. Not terrible, but like a hundred. So one day I made $108. Wow. That's a lot of money. It's in 1980 it's, money. That's right. Yeah. It's a lot of money, right? Yeah. And so, and I was, my dad's like, you're good because you can charm people so you can get those tips. So he's like, build up your war chest and then go out and see. And so my mom's like, you got to go to college. And I'm like, screw college. And my dad's like, you got to let him try. And so that was a tug of war. And then I just moved to L.A. And, and then I moved to L.A. And my friend came with me. And my parents agreed to sign in case I missed the rent. And co sign a lease. Yes. And I got a lease for six months at like a crappy apartment. And that's how I started. Mm -hmm. And I signed up for extra work. And then I, my journey began. But it was very hard to get extra How work. did you first break? Uh, there was many things that lead up to it. It's not one thing. Yeah. But one of my first... First, first breaks was, you've been hurt. Remember those commercials? You've been hurt. And there would be a guy that'd be like, oh. You're like a, you're like I a, was that guy. Oh. oh. <laughs> and it was $200 and it was like, oh. <laughs> and it was like the back of your neck. I have the tape somewhere. <laughs> I was the neck react guy. It was 200 bucks. I was like 22 years old. And it was like, you've been hurt. And it was like a basic cable non-union avocados <laughs> and then boom and then did the next break was and i was performing stand was, oh, so there's when, a lot of stuff how did the stand-up get started well i i didn't know anything drew i mean this is a nine-hour podcast if you really want to do it it takes a long time to understand what the business is and and still don't understand it but i was doing i i got drama log somebody told me what that was and i auditioned for a couple of improv troops, they actually paid money. And they said there was an improv troupe doing stuff at schools once a week or whatever. I auditioned, I auditioned, and I got a job. Is it improv? Yes, which was nuts. And I would sometimes- So, so your, your entry into comedy was through improv? Improv. I see. And I wanted to be, one of my heroes was Mike Myers, you know, and I wanted <laughs> to do that. And then I was going to join Second City, and it was like 1990, and it just left L.A. And it was like, go to Chicago. And then there was the Groundlings. And the Groundlings were like, had 
all of these classes and I'm like, that's so much money. And they're like, well, this is what it is. And I, and I was like, well, that's a lot. And I didn't have anything. And somebody's like, you can do stand up and try it that way. And so I went to an open mic at Howard Johnson's, uh, it was Beverly Garland Hotel in Valley. Crazy. And I did an open mic and they had a contest and they had three prizes and I won second place and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is what I'm meant to do. And then that I went to a next week at a Tony Roma's and I performed and I bombed so bad that I didn't go up for four months. Oof. What, what does comedy do for you, do you think? Now it totally lets me express my ideas uh, and makes me, it's a layered question, but I'll try to give you the simplest way. I was telling somebody this the other night. I've been to clubs, nightclubs, we're surrounded by people with bottles. I've stood on top of like monuments that people wish I could go on. I've been in private jets. I've had beautiful cars and I would rather be on stage connecting with somebody than all of that. It's given me more gratification. And is the connection, is it something like something you didn't get that you're getting from an audience or is it changing them, moving them? What does the laughter do? Um, it's not so much about <laughs> laughter anymore, although I still obviously need and want to get the laughs, but it's more about a connection. Yeah. You know, you said something to me a long time ago that was one of the most proud thing, profound things ever in life. That you said the only thing we have in this world is human connection, and that is that's what comedy is. And it's it's about a like minded individual getting your thoughts. Yeah, I feel more connected with people through that than I do when I'm behind the line in Trader Joe's and some ladies like going, so, "Well, did you want gluten free?" And people have no awareness. Right. So, so it's almost almost an intellectual kind of connection. No, emotional, spiritual, emotional, emotional, yeah. definitely. And did it, you have trouble connecting in other ways? No, 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 no. I connect with. What's people. your relationship history been? <clears throat> Well, I could tell you exactly why I started comedy and it, I could, because I could tell you right now, being the youngest, the runt and all this stuff, I was never heard. Mm. So definitely, well, that's, it's part of, that's definitely part of the needing to be heard thing. Yeah. But it's also, um, it is about being like, you no, know, in the world before I was whatever I am, I was always looked upon as either like people didn't know what to make of me like he's weird or oh my god that guy's hilarious and he's crazy but i was definitely a thing i was some type of entity mm -hmm. do you know what i'm saying yes and i wasn't your like, character yeah and it wasn't really trying to be i'm probably on the spectrum a little asperg's you know re and you know yeah. Yeah, we all have something yeah. right and I've always been a little hyper. And I look at my brother. And my brother's super hyper. He gets manic. And my other sister gets manic. And I can see all this stuff. So I just, I can tell you really quickly. And you can give a simple breakdown of it. But I was a sickly child. Mm. I was the youngest what child. I have massive heart problems. But What's now a heart problem? Have, I've had a pacemaker since I was nine. From what? Oh, no, 10. Uh, a congenital heart block. Oh. And a lot of people didn't know that about me and but i've always had great doctors do you have under, other structural problem with the heart too or just no, the, just the electrical system yeah and then i did something called an ablation later in life which is for anyone listening to this get it did you have atrial fib or something massive atrial fib yeah so like yeah and i've done three of them and you'll never need it again <clears throat> it's incredible um but I feel amazing. I've always worked out. I've always been strong. Mm -hmm. I've always played hoops, golf. It's not anything. It's just literally like I needed the little kick, and that's what yeah. the, the yeah. pacemakers. It's not a big deal. Except in those days, they were about this big. Yeah, but and they've got a little kid. They're like, yeah, this yeah. Well, that's thing. another drama. But now they're much smaller, yeah. and they hide them. And all now they're stuff. like a dime. Yes, nickel. So medical history, Catholic repression, youngest of six, born I think a little crazy anyway. Is a Molotov cocktail for <laughs> Jamie Kennedy. Here he is. Well, let's see. You got a beautiful fanny. All right, I want to take a little break from our show for our sponsor, Upstart. Uh, of course, as most of us find out the hard way, getting to debt is easy. Getting out is hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Sky high interest rates can make it very difficult to break out of that revolving debt cycle. Well, thankfully, there is now Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that offers interest 
offer smarter interest rates to help you pay off interest credit and card start again yep i got distracted by you this you want to go straight from the intro jesus yeah all right uh, i need a little, time to take a little break from the show to hear about time to take a little break from our show to hear from our sponsors at upstart and of course as most of us have found out the hard way it's easy to get into debt just hard to get out especially if your fico score is not great interest rates can make it difficult to break out of a revolving debt debt cycle Thankfully, now there is Upstart.com. It's the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. That's right. Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness, right? That makes sense. They reward you based on your education, your job history, who you are. It's a, far, it's a smarter way of assessing. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They make it fast, simple, easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. Best part, once the loan is approved, most people get their funds the very next day. Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or just to make larger purchases. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything onto one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash Dr. Drew. Again, it's U-P-S-T-A-R-T dot com slash D-R-D-R-E-W and find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and it will not affect your credit. That is upstart.com slash Dr. Drew. And now let's get back to our show. Right. Let me just tell you, Jamie, this, this is a gentleman that uh, I was exposed to on your mom's house. And he actually, should we, I'll, I'll introduce you to him first, then I'll show you his uh, personal Instagram message to me. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, what we got, uh, we could show you the original clip that we, you know, that we all fell in love with, and then some new stuff that you've never seen before. I've never seen? Yeah, and you, uh, we would love your diagnosis. Oh, my God. Yeah. Same guy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. All right, here we go. So this is the introduction to Robert. Black guys would love to fuck and fuck good. If you're a hot black guy and you want to fuck me at twenty three ninety five, if you want to move in, you can move in, but you got to fuck me. I need, I need to be fucked a lot, man. Get rid free food, free rent, and everything else, man. You're the deal, man. Men from jail, homeless, or um, you're a thug, you want to come move in. A friend can move in with you too, man. Free rent, you get a lease and a key. Fuck me. Piss on me. Beat me. Home me now. You see me, you want to come over today and try it out? Try it out, man. If you're in my building, try it out. If you want to fuck a piss on me, try it out. Seriously, plight only as fuck, man. I'm looking for hardcore guys. I mean it. I want to do it. And I want to deliver it. I'm a hot, fuck, white trash. Come, don't flip fuck. So that's the original video. So there's t-shirts now that I want you to wear. It says try it out. Now that you've been indoctrinated to Robert. And, um, no, you got to help him. Okay, I, that's what my impression was too. I was. No, it, it, it starts it, funny and then it goes. Goes. That's how I felt. I felt sad. No, right? there's, there's, he's yeah. a poor guy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he could get fucked, Robert. You can, but he's like, piss on me, well, shit my eyeball. So here Clearly, he is. Robert, you... Here he is on an Instagram that I've not seen yet. Right. right? So, so Drew, so this is the new stuff. Uh, ever since like we refound his his profile, he's just been going wild on instagram live and so uh this is us capturing one of his latest broadcasts we review this on ymh by the time this episode drops and i like the way the opening little volley on this is if you look at the scroll can you say bert is fat yeah yeah, yeah. okay right. oh what is that bart is fat oh okay bart is fat okay 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 so um like i said I was in the slave days, man, and then that's those niggas tied me up, put tits on a clam, went for tits, man. Yeah, smacking my fucking ass, sneezing me. It's got fat fanny. Yeah, fam. Picking that cotton. Yeah, whipping my fucking ass. Yeah. Milk at me. Oh, fucking A, man. That'd be fucking hot, man. Being a fucking slave to hot nigga dick, man, being used. Yep. So, Drew, are you catching that he wants to go back to the times of the slaves so that they could piss on him and beat him? Is that how that works? I don't even know if we're allowed to have this conversation. <laughs> I don't either. I'm dead serious. I, I, I'm dead I, serious. Like, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's move not. On. Let's like, move on. Like, delete. We need, like, a cosign. This yeah, is... yeah I, I'm with Jamie on this This, uh, this isn't the craziest stuff yet, though. I think Drew wants to see it. Uh, that's but wait, how do we go from, tell me why you got in the comedy, to piss on me, shit my face... <laughs> 
Dude, give me a, a trigger warning. It's just, it's Jesus just, it's what you call a transition, H. Jamie. I told you. Fuck me. I'm looking for people to <laughs> fuck me, throw up in my asshole, piss in my eyes, blind me with urine, fuck my, fuck, take a taco shell, crumple it, shove it up my ass, give me fuck. Dude, clean the, this poor guy, dude. Help him. This is not fucking funny. I know. Dude, we understand. We, this is gone beyond fetish uh, now. We got, dude, take him down the cedars. He's not local. You need, I don't think. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm home now. This is I'm where secure. it's like, it's You're sad. But, now, there's an example of what, this is where Jamie knows. Now, that's where Jamie and Drew argument. That's damaged. Yes, yes. He's a damaged guy. Yes, but that's but, clearly. Well, I think you need but to a girl walk, walking down the street is being a rhino. Does it might just have cash flow problems? It could be. So let us know if this part specifically oh, is what's the most damaged. They really want us to watch Guys, this. I don't, I don't know what's coming. Get in trouble. Here. Hot ass, hot it's twenty. Yep. What? What is that? Oh, what do you right. think's in that cup? Oh my oh, god. god. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> don't you do it. Don't. Oh. Oh. No. oh. Yep. Ow! Oh. Don't worry, we blurred it. <sighs> no! No! Oh! Why? No! Why? No! Why you didn't blur that? Oh my god! He's just drinking apple juice, man. Oh. Oh. I and the piss, and I'm gonna get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Oh, oh, don't do it. Don't. Oh, oh, Jesus God. That's a double dose of that's a double dose of PP. Dude. So Jamie, I feel bonded doing? to you having gotten through this together. <laughs> really seriously. This is like traumatic. Bro. Yeah. Bro. This is, is right. make anyone on celebrity rehab look kind of well adjusted. Oh. Yeah. So all right. But we cannot judge. No, no. Whatever he's into, he's entitled. However, it, it made me sad at first because he seemed so desperate and alone and sad and was yes. asking to be abused. Yeah, he wanted to be abused. That's that. He now, to drink pee. Yeah. Not my thing, but. Whew. But I do feel it. Just, I see the damage. I feel bad. Yes. Although I don't he know has how. a response to me saying he was damaged. Oh, let's see it. He oh, responds. God, I'm scared. No, I'm no, scared. this is not a scary part. But no, he, let, me, uh, let me pull that up. He has an opinion. About me saying that uh, maybe you're there's something And you're going to say, he's going to say, I got a fat fan. It's all going to come. <laughs> no, I think it's something about the taco that you were talking about. <laughs> no. Um, he's, I don't he, even get this. It was so on this Easter. is a guy that loves you? This is a fan this of the a, podcast? This what is a guy. This? How, did, how, did you, who, he, how was he found originally? Um, someone sent in his profile, uh, and then it was just so crazy that we played it once. And Tom thought he was a cool guy. Oh, I mean, this is the pioneer of the cool guys club. Right. Can, I mean, you can tell the that, cool, right? Cool okay. guy. Yeah. And so and this, uh, this message that. specifically for Drew is Easter themed. This, he was on Easter and somebody told him that I was talking about him. Right. Oh, so. All right. Dr. Drew, uh, what was Dr. Drew saying about me? Um, yeah, probably negative. Well, I was thinking scared by Dr. Drew. Cause Dr. Drew to me is a fucking moron. I was never molested again. I'm not unhappy. I'm not so, I'm not so I got a brain, okay? Very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. I don't think Dr. Drew is compared to my brain. Only dog to drink a pair to the goddamn fucking chicken head. That's like Colonel Sanders. He reminds me of Colonel Sanders of uh, uh, the virus. Dude, hey, Dr. Drew, you hear that? You remind me of uh, a Colonel Sanders with a virus. Go, uh, 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 uh. Please, Dr. Bruce, talk about yourself. Wait, wait. See, he has no problems. He's a happy wait. adjusted. <laughs> the greatest revelation is out that you're a Colonel Sanders without the beard. He's not w totally wrong. Without the beard and with a virus, though. <laughs> a throat virus of some type. <laughs> so he's pretty astute. He's got, we got a nail. Hold on. Let's go back. <laughs> hey, I need to play. I need to put on a fake beard and be, dude, be the new Colonel Sanders. Dude, you That's should. That's what I should do. You should. Dude. Did you do it, one of them? No. I wish. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. Dude, wait. Wait a minute. There's <laughs> so much going on. Hold on. <laughs> See, I got PTSD. Hold on. This dude. That, here's what I love about the guy, first of all. 
everything. There's no, there's no stereotype about him. Right. He's he's like, they hey, threw them all the way. He's like, piss on me, shit in my eye. <laughs> and he's got, he's not, you know, there's nothing effeminate about him. You know what I mean? He, so did he, he have a Southern accent a little bit? Like that, I, and then he got a little there. He's like, yeah. Dr. Drew, you don't know me. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, look, I mean, I don't know. I will say, though, that there's a deeper conversation. <laughs> he might have something happen to him that he doesn't know because he's blacked it out. Could be. Which I... Uh, may not be anything to, we can do about that. You hit me up to that, too. My, yes. Maybe he's had somebody call, slap him on the ass, tell me how to fat fanny. Yeah. Um, but he's living his life. Uh, La Vida, yeah. La Vida Loco. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing he's, what he wants. He's living his life. I mean, he's... But there's got to be... There has to be, what is it when, on a serious note, I know, I'm, I'm trying to make it serious, when people want to be abused. Yeah. I kind of know, I know what it is, I kind of know what you're going to say, but I want to hear from you. It's a whole spectrum, right? Some okay. people, some people, it's nothing, mm -hmm. and some people, it's a traumatic reenactment okay. of some sort of something. You know. And it's... Somewhere in from and, and on the Kinsey scale, it's there. Uh, yeah, okay. it can go either way. Right. And and, um, and I would never. I don't know. Certainly not judging or objecting to people doing even whatever this guy's into. But he might re-traumatize himself. He might get himself in some bad situations. You know what I mean? Things. Can, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and he seems so desperate and sad that when I first saw him. Honestly, I'm going to tell you something right now. And yeah. You're going to not agree with it. He yeah. didn't seem that sad. Not the not he the not the like later he's stuff. He's having a good time. Yeah, not a, the later he stuff. He had a nice cold glass no, no. of piss. Yeah, <laughs> drank that. I'm not followed sure. Followed up with another Jamie, ice cold glass of hey, piss. Hey, Jamie, I'm not sure it was cold. All right, uh, whatever. I'm just saying. He was. No, you he, saw him. You saw him re refill that. Yeah, he refilled it. It's he warm. He refilled it. Nice he's, warm glass. He sat naked. He seemed like he didn't have any restrictions. He had the bunny ears on, so he's festive. I don't think he was having a terrible day. I mean, remember when you guys said you want me to come back on YMH and uh, talk about doing this show and whether I still think it was a good idea. I'm reconsidering the whole thing. Nah. Come on. Nah, you love it, Drew. Oh, Jesus. I'm That's just scared just... we're going to get, they're going to bring that video up in five years and we're going to say we're not sympathetic to Pedro. Uh, when it becomes, when it becomes yeah, when it becomes popular. <laughs> when there's a, 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 P2, a P2 movement. Yeah. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. If that doesn't go viral, we're going to get in trouble. You're making fun of the Me Too movement, making a P2 movement. Dude, and you're a white guy and I'm a white guy. We're in trouble for that. But God damn it, that was fun. Thank you. Uh, P2. Did you just make that up? Right off the top of my head. Wow. How about that? Uh, but and he I, did. He literally P2'd. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's hashtag P2. That, that's a, somebody, please... Please share the hashtag with Robert. Don't, don't worry, Drew. I think it's going to be the next shirt. Okay. Can I ask you a question? And this is a real talk again. I, oh, this is like, because there's always drama underneath all this shit. <sighs> Twitter is bullshit. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> How do they let some of the shit that's on there? Somebody sent me a video leak. Literally, I needed a trigger warning. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. How do they get away with all that stuff? Because they, when they start talking about restricting, they don't what, restrict. But dude, when they start I'm talking, talking about a video it, in this vein, I know, I'm not going to say what it was. They, I they, was like, they immediately start. You know, where do we stop? How do we? Where do we stop? Thing? I know, I know, I know. Things aren't supposed to it, go in that area of your body. Is this the taco again? It was. I couldn't believe it was actually on Twitter. Like you could just yeah. click and see it. I yeah. was like, yeah, uh, and and so this is the world we live in right now. I, I think. I don't know. I think we have to keep the phones out of the hands of school kids. I, I've decided that maybe the first, maybe the first sort of move, and then maybe if their business model starts having to be adjusted, maybe then they'll. Change. Well, here's another question: Why does it all social media have a restriction that says 18 or over or 18 and under? Hmm. Why don't they ever have that? Because I know they they know that there's no use for it. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't know. People would automatically get into it no matter what. I'm a 29-year-old male that has tested clean after being checked for STDs over the last few months. More often than not, I have a slight burning sensation after I ejaculate. For years, I had my... Are we into this now? I had just some, Jesus, some questions. Jesus, we went from my house to this house you to get, this house. This is the whipsaw of Dr. Drew after dark. That's why it's right. after dark, Jamie. All right, go ahead. For years, I've had coagulation in my semen. I've told that's normal. Those little tapioca pudding little oh, kernels. Beautiful. Yeah. Recently, it seems abnormally thick, which seems especially weird given that I stay well hydrated. What could possibly cause my semen to thicken? Could it be the cause of my slight burning? Yes, it could be the burning. Uh, and the thickening is usually nothing. It could be just that you need to pull the pipe, evacuate the 
cl clean the pipe more frequently. Okay, wait. Let me just go back. What is this guy going on in his life that he's literally going? My semen's oh, lumpy. Young men, young men. Oh, they think about their penis and they're they're functioning all the time. Dude, get young. a get a job. Yeah. And number two, here's another look. I have another one. Almost every time I, I got lumps. Yeah, almost every time Ooh. I I make white and I take pee afterwards. I make white. <laughs> I made a white, mommy. Look. What is he? My pee gets captured in the baby batter and oh, forms Jesus. a bubble. Delete. Oh, uh, yeah. Delete. Dude, you can't read some of this I've been dating shit. by my current boyfriend for three years. We have a good relationship. I love the man. However, I recently recorded myself in an intimate... Recorded myself girl in an intimate setting. Girl or man. This is a girl. Send it to an old F buddy who I keep in contact with. My Fuck sex buddy. life with my boyfriend has been stagnant because of our conflicting schedules. Uh, the way I understand he gets tired, I feel he uses that excuse more often than not. I resort to my old buddy to feel wanted. I don't like how I feel, feel morality-wise after I don't want to keep doing it, but I want to keep wanted. I want to be wanted by a man I love. How do I spark the heat of passion and get him to ravish me? Wait, what's the question, dude? The, the thing is, the boyfriend's tired and not having as much sex with her, so she's showing videos, sending pictures and videos to an old boyfriend. Okay, that's an easy answer. Are you going to answer it? Go ahead. Well, I mean, he's getting bored. So is it time for that relationship to end? Well, I think you got a question what the age is. 20, I mean, oh, it doesn't say. But but you're, to your point though, let's say they're, you know, they're- Monogamy is also another big topic right. you can take. But but your mom would love that. And- She just died. Yes. So you're free to, you're free to- By the way, I do feel free, right? Yeah. I can say that. <laughs> so. Hey mom, I made a baby bed. So- I made weight. Here's the thing. If, they're, if he's bored in this relationship, if they, she may be thinking this is a potential marriage. If they're bored now, it's going to get worse yeah. all the time. So this, you may want to think in terms of how long term do you want to stay in this thing if it's already bored. That's all I'm saying. 26-year-old, uh, happily married. I've been with him, my husband for eight years, married for three. He's the only man I've had sex with, but he has had sex with other women. Recently, he has begged me to cheat on him. <laughs> you know what that is. Cuckolding. But it's also, he's out there. And oh, you think? Yeah. He's like, you should go do it because he's out there. He went so far as to make accounts for me on dating sites. Oh, also. my God. Yeah. But he's also a cuckolder. He's right. only a real cuckolder, though, if he's like, you can do it in front of me. Right. And if he makes white, I can so clean it up. Is that something you're into? No, but I know what it is. I mean, I just happen to know. I, can you understand it? Can I understand what? It's guys that are into that? That's a deeper conversation. Um, can I understand it? Mm, possibly. I, it's a mystery to me. I'll tell you why. What if you're an older guy? I could see why older guys seems like older guys do it. Not the cuckolding. There's the, like there's, like if you're a lot older, you have a super young wife. Well, there's and, like a lot. There's older guys that do it that have a younger wife and want to see her get pleasure, and then she enjoys it. So he's it. doing it to try to maintain the relationship. Yeah, but it's not like he's like in, he literally just is a voyeur. There are people that are voyeurs. Yeah, and you're then right. There's there are videos that are like. This is to teach you a lesson, Henry. Oof. Jerome, get in the back with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, this is for your own good. Uh, let's get to a voice message. If Jamie, Go I'm going to be in so much trouble. Am I in fucking trouble now with the fucking world? Your mom's passed away. You're not going to kill her. It's Hollywood. They're going to be like, you're in trouble. Go ahead. Hi, Dr. Drew. My name is Chris. Um, I've had an issue since probably the first time I ever drank. After I take maybe a shot or even just like a sip of beer, a little bit of wine, my anus tends to get very hot. It tends to loosen up. It tends to spasm a little bit. Um, and a little bit of fecal matter comes out. And that's happened damn near every single time I've drank. And I've talked to other people. They have not had the same experience. Looked it up online. Just wanted to get your opinions on it. See what's up. All right, thanks for doing what you do. Can I, I ask, yeah. Well, after you have a glass of wine, your ass usually leaks can, when someone is putting their thumb in it. Well, in that's, of course. But you, it can, the muscle can loosen, but this shouldn't be leakage. So it makes me wonder... I think he's getting thumbed. No, it makes me wonder about things like... that. There's neurological things that can do that. So you might want to talk to your doctor about it. Dude, throw that out. That was a dumb question. All right, let's get another. Come give on, me, give my, me a smart Dr. Drew, I had a glass of Chianti and my asshole leaks. Well, no, there are things. I that, had a glass of Chianti and my asshole There are tingling. strange things that Yeah, because you would like Look, they, someone they're, to lick it. There are strange things that people get, symptoms of medical problems when they drink, like your lymph nodes can hurt when you have Hodgkin's disease. 
Oh, this strange stuff. Oh, all right. I'm sorry to make it funny of you then. So, so okay. Next question. Idiot. Hey, Dr. Drew. This is Matt up in Sewer Juice, New York. Uh, quick question. Sewer Juice? I didn't need the Google Map night there. night when I go to sleep, my B-hole is itching. <laughs> like, all the time. Not once in a while. And, you know, I don't know if it's my diet or whatnot. I mean, I don't do drugs, but I drink. And I got a lot of liquor and smoke cigars and everything. Anyone can help me? Thanks, Dr. Drew. Dude. So it's called, let's use the technical term, pruritus ani. Okay, Jamie? What is that? You okay? No, it's just you got a lot of dudes calling about problems with their yeah. assholes. It could be a whipworm or pinworm. You, they, they come out at night and they cause itching. And so it makes me think about uh, some, of the, some of the parasites. So again, the, the old way they used to do it, they used to put scotch tape. Oh, this is actually true. They put wow. scotch tape around the ani. And the whip, whip worms, or I think it's pinworms, would get stuck on the tape, and they'd make the diagnosis that way. Old school. Old school. Can I just Old tell school. all these guys this? I was joking, but I didn't know these were serious problems, so I apologize. Well, we, I don't know if they are or not. But his, they, let me they, help you guys. I, my life has changed since I take a probiotic. Oh, and, and I... My that, whole gut flora, he'll tell you that. I will tell that. you, yeah. There's a lot of attention you could... You, you have to have... There's take a, one probiotic. I'm going to just tell them this, and then you tell them. Yeah. I barely wipe. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So, so the- it's like wrapped at Macy's, guys. It'll take you about a month. There's also something called a fecal transplant. I didn't do that. No, but, no, no. But nope, do people swear by that, dude? They're doing I, it I know, Beverly but Hills. For, but that's for other stuff. But right. there is there's something called I think it's called the food map diet. Yep. There, right? Yep. You there is non-absorbable bulk like Metamucil. Mm-hmm. There's absorbable agents like Acacia, and then there's prebiotics and there's probiotics. These five things can change your life. You do, not everyone has to do all five. I do mostly non-absorbable and a probiotic and uh, and head towards the food map. Diet. I go to Lassen's or Whole Foods, get the bottle of Solgar. Yeah. It's forty nine ninety nine. dollars Solgar? Solgar is like a high one. It's got like 90 billion. It says, oh, it's a, yeah. you take one a day, it's incredible. Is it the one you have to keep in the refrigerator? Yeah. yeah. But I'm just telling you, a lot of my issues that I had, like it's unbelievable. So it's yeah. like the gut floor it, it, it is, is a big deal. Gut floor is a big that? deal. We're making more of I'm, I'm tempted. I'm close to writing a book about it. You should. Yeah. And I also think a lot of the gluten stuff is true and they try not to eat it. It's because- true, but it may it may end up being that in, in, in avoiding gluten, you end up inadvertently sort of heading towards the food map diet. And mm-hmm. you may be actually doing something with your gut flora and not the gluten. It may be sort of a, a miss. It's okay, but the target may actually not be that for some people. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah. This conversation got less sexy at that moment, but. You and I always end up talking about food and feces. Doesn't that usually Well, thing? we get a lot of butthole messages. <laughs> right. Do you want to do one more voice message? Something. A woman, please. Yeah, a woman, please. The men are getting, are grossing us out a bit. Here we go. Aren't you having fun? Hi, Dr. Drew. My name is Brittany. I'm from Texas. I've been a for about 10 years, and um, I've been clean about two, and that means totally clean. No, no weed, no pills, no nothing. Um, so I have a five-year-old daughter. Her father is in prison for drug-related offenses. He's the one that got me started on heroin. And I know that addiction can be a genetic thing. And I guess I'm wondering, in your opinion, how do I talk to her about this as she gets older? Yeah. And how do I warn her against the dangers of drug use and, and her own um, genetic makeup, I guess? No, no, no. It's a great question. No, it's no. Stop Tell it. do you have you you say your opinion and I'll give mine. Stop it. Go my little pony with it, okay? I mean, you don't Hey, listen. Uh Valerie, I know you're 5 and you're in a sandbox. This is a needle. It's a rusty needle. Yep. Here's a spoon. No. Don't do it. No, dude, let her be a kid. Yeah, she let her might be a kid. Have it. Let her, right. Even whether one or both parents have the gene. So even when both parents have it, it's still about 50% per child that they get this potential. And genetics aren't destiny, right? So it's a potential. And so once she hits high school, what, I mean, you're in recovery, so you have to tell her about your disease and your recovery, but don't, don't really start burdening her with it until teenage years. And then just start talking, just education, just ask, and just always ask, do you have more questions? Do you have more questions? And it's, again, only about 50%. There's a couple of ethnicities where it's a little higher, but generally, whether one or both parent have it, that 50% penetrance in a child. And you, though, it will, me and I will, you and I will disagree. Some people are addicted but I think some people develop a habit. Oh yeah, these days now. And so it's a, oh, yeah. maybe the parents just um, like to her- party. Heroin is not a part-time deal. But but 
But pills these days, with something we used to never see, and this is why you said I would disagree, we would never see pill addicts. But now the doctors were handing out so much, we have all these drug-dependent people that are not drug addicts. Time out. I had a medical condition my whole life. I'm not saying people are weak. I'm just saying how come... I'm very lucky. I had pills from Cedar Sinai, whichever they are, when you have my operation. So what is a high opiate? Yeah. Right? Give me I mean, whatever. You needed it. Yeah. And I took one and I felt like shit. Okay. Well, I, I feel, felt sick. Okay. And I gave them to another actor. He's like, thanks. And he's now a drug addict. No. And but so, what I'm saying is maybe I'm lucky because I don't, I'm not yes. into him. No, I feel, I feel, I'm I get, lucky. I get, I'm lucky too. My genetics, I take, I get dysphoria when I take opiates. What is that? Is I feel like shit? Uh, like shit and depressed. Yeah. I was on, no, I felt good when I'm under anesthesia. I would live in an anesthesia. Okay. So, the, but, not anesthesia. The, the, they no, give I know. you the Versed before the Dude, anesthesia. Dude, the Versed's incredible. Yeah, so, me too. Incredible. So, I suggest everybody should just <laughs> stop their lives and get on it. But what I'm trying to tell you is, I know it's not a real life. Yeah. I've made a conscious choice. So, this is where you and I argue. But again, I had an, an uncle who just died at 81 who drank a fifth of gin every day good for him. and was functional. Good for him. And he stopped for 30 years because he was like, I was a raging drunk. Mm. And then my cousin doesn't drink at all. So, so we, we it call, is, yeah, it doesn't transfer necessarily. But the, his stopping without treatment is something. No, that, he was deep in treatment. Oh, okay. But so, what I'm saying is I see the alcohols in my family. I see the non-alcohols. I see people that stop. I see people that don't stop. I've seen, I've, this is where you and I argue. I've seen sporadic drug use on, in Hollywood and I've seen people just not do it anymore. Oh yeah. Well, that, 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 could, that could either be non-addicted or not yet lost control and got control over it. When, when you really lose control, though, then that's it. It's on. But have you ever seen anyone in Hollywood do a bump and never knew? And not, cocaine? Yeah. Not all, do, all the time. And cocaine, not do another one. Cocaine. Some of it's like an espresso it, for some people. But not with crack. Oh, listen, I know a lot of crackheads. Okay. No, okay. I'm just saying uh, not with crack. Yeah, no, I, I believe that. Yeah. I don't really know crackheads. So. Um, I got weird again. I'm exhausted. Dude, we didn't even start. <laughs> so, what do you we want to do now? We barely even started. What do you like, want to do, Jamie? This was so good. Right? I didn't even get to, but I feel like you asked me a lot of questions and we didn't even finish my answers, but it's fine. And then we went to Piss Boy. Right. I we had enough of you and fat fannies and uh, we got the, we got the. Uh, you can't tell me I got problems. This is a nice glass of piss. You got the problem, asshole. Trying to hurry up. Wait, let's have Put the Colonel Sanders thing again out there. You're a Colonel Sanders without urine. <laughs> you can't, and you guys are make. You should be in trouble. Why? You're exploiting piss man and not give him a cut of the profits in the shirt. Oh, in the shirts? Drink pee responsibly. No, no. Oh, we're, we're I thought of P2. Hashtag P2. By the way, so. I don't care how many. They're going to come after us. That was hilarious. Comedy first. <laughs> hilarious. I'm sorry. This is where we're, we're at right now. Will you explain this to people? What? The joke always wins. Not in this world, unfortunately. No, it has to. I, I hope I that you're strong in comedy clubs. Your ability to Safe tell space. the joke, I think, should should be sacred. Dude, that is getting impeded. I know that. I know. And aren't we then heading towards what we call totalitarianism? I, yes. Yes. Isn't that what's the word? Yes. It's bizarre. That's how Russia did it. So explain to me like this: If you say you like chocolate. And I say, I hate chocolate. And then you say, well, let me tell you about chocolate. And then I try to impede your right to tell me the rights yeah. about chocolate. Yeah. That is psychosis, correct? Th that is um, mandated speech. Wow. And if the government gets involved with it, that's totalitarianism. So it's kind of happening, correct? Not here yet, but it's happening socially. It's not happening in government. And, and this was... But people are getting banned but off there platforms was a guy, and they're considered all whack Yeah, jobs. but there wasn't the, it's not the government doing it. And so the... There was a guy named Alexis de Tocqueville wrote a book called Democracy in America in 1820. And he said that um, though America has free speech, they have some of the most, we have actually in reality, the most limited speech in the world because the, the pressure, the, the social pressure not to say things is so profound. Now, then he was talking about religious things and that kind of stuff. Now it's this. It's, it's intense. It's an interesting time. Do you edit yourself when you do your comedy? I try to be in bulletproof. I try to make sure I have things that I can back up. And you try to be conscious about stuff that might be controversial. And yes. Say, and I you don't, don't want to be that way. No, I, I don't mind being controversial. I love that. But no, but I, I mean offensive. You don't want to be offensive. Well, that's, I don't Depends. think you should right. come to a comedy okay. club if you're going to be offended. Yeah. But I don't try to just like use things that are uh, just 
I'm not trying to shock you. I'm actually trying to make a point. Right. And, you know, it's like I have a joke where I say, like, I can't do a lot of these jokes because I'm a white guy in my 40s, which I'm sure a lot of comedians talk about. And I'm like, we're not that popular right now. And I go, we had a good run, sir. We had a good few <laughs> thousand years. That's usually, funny. You know what I mean? That's I'm funny. making fun of Well, you can punch down or up. You can't punch down. But again, who's that? That, that term's yeah. annoying. Like, yeah. isn't I? I yeah. If you're, uh, you you should strive to be the best you can be, and you should try to take out higher up. But sometimes there are jokes down to, and it's like I hate it when people try to be a cop. It's like yeah. you're trying to find something, and there's humor and some. It's a messy process. Yes, that's what. It's, it's, the biggest thing is it is a messy process doing a joke, and. That's why you see a lot of clubs banning phones now because people take one little thing and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. Well, there's nothing deep. wrong with hashtag P2. No, but you will get you'll get hollered at for that. Really? Oh, dude. You know why? I'll tell you why. Why? All right, let's go down. You want to go down a rabbit hole? Yeah. So somebody did something recently. I was I was did a show at the Laugh Factory, and the, uh, uh, another lady went on and said. Um, look at all the female comics on the lineup. And she was being sarcastic and there was none. And they put me on the lineup and there was two female comedians that canceled. And so they called me last minute. And the lady says, you should have another female. And all this stuff and got very upset. And then the Laugh Factory made it. This was it, a customer or is this a comedian? This was like a comedian. Yeah. I don't know. And the Laugh Factory made a joke and said, uh, we can't force somebody to perform here or whatever. So I don't know the joke and they went no means no oh and the person went crazy angry and it was a joke and she was like you're making fun of rape culture and all the stuff so that joke which it wasn't it was a joke that joke P2 people will tell you that you're undermining the Me Too movement I'm just telling you oh you're gonna get that okay. and you're a guy that's respected so now you are me so welcome <laughs> to my world with that we will wrap things up Jamie a privilege. Thank you for. I feel Love bonded it. to you Love through the you trauma too. of this we, day, dude. I, <laughs> We've Jesus. traveled some territory Give me a here. Warning. That's almost yeah. illegal. Borderline. What you guys uh, show. That's what they show us. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, do support the people that support the pod. Uh, love this, this stuff, and uh, all the other guys that support us, so we can keep doing this. We'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.